Hello and welcome to another Play Better Chess video and today I have more good habits to improve your chess. Uh, so today I have a game between two of the greatest players uh, in history, the third and fourth world chess champions, uh, which is fitting because right now we're having uh, the current world chess championship going on in Singapore and I have uh, videos that I will be putting out uh, for that while that is going on. But in the meantime, uh, I will go over this game between Jose Raul Capablanca uh, from Cuba versus his opponent Alexander Alakine, um, who was also the only world champion to die while he was champion. Uh, so he died, and then I believe they had a tournament to decide who the new champion would be. Uh, and I think it was Mikhail Botvinnik was the next champion. Uh, so, let's see what good habits we can learn uh, by seeing you know, what habits the greatest players in history use. Now, Capablanca is known to be a more strategic player, uh, whereas his opponent was known to be more attacking, and uh, he enjoyed tactical positions and Gary Kasparov another great tactical former world champion uh, Alakine was one of his heroes so if you like tactics check out some more Alakine games if you like more strategic games then check out Capablanca so a good habit if you are a strategic player or you just don't like crazy tactical chess games, uh, you can do what Capablanca did here by playing d4, because most of these d4 games tend to be more strategic. But <clears throat> just remember that no matter what you try to do, if you play a more strategic opening, uh, if your opponent wants to create some tactics bad enough, they can do it. Uh, just by maybe sacrificing some pawns and opening the position up and turning it into a crazy game. But d4 was played by Capablanca, controlling the center. And now we have d5. And these tend to be more closed uh, games in the center. So let's see what happens. c4 is played. Uh, now this is a queen's gambit. And it attacks this pawn immediately. But if the d5 pawn captures on c4, it pulls a more valuable central pawn off to the side. Uh, so a good habit to improve your chess is really think about controlling the center, attacking squares in the center, and dictating the flow of the game uh, through the center here. So now we have e6 just fortifying this attacked pawn so knight to c3 is played and if you are attacking uh, a pawn like this well you know your opponent defends you might as well just bring another attacker here and just slowly build up the pressure in the center so now uh, alakine he just defends and we see a good habit to get into here of developing your knights early uh, because knights are almost always well placed on f6 c6 here for black and for white c3 and f3 uh, and while you're bringing your knights out that gives you more time to figure out what to do with your bishops and speaking of bishops capablanca decides to go ahead and bring his out and he achieves a pin here on the knight against the queen. So that immobilizes this knight, and now the knight can no longer defend uh, this pawn. You know, if there are exchanges here and the knight tries to jump forward, uh, well, the queen could be captured. So now we have the other knight developing first. Uh, and this is a little trap here. Uh, if you know, we start exchanging in the center. Uh, well, there is a possibility of 
capture. I'll go ahead and show you this. So what if white captures and then black captures and then white thinks, oh, I can capture this pawn here because the knight is pinned. Well, he would be in for a surprise. And this is a little opening trick here. This would be a blunder uh, because after capture and uh, if the queen is captured, well, then you have bishop to b4 here, checking the king. And the only way to get out of this check uh, would be to block with the queen. Uh, so now you could go ahead, capture, uh, and then, you know, if they cap, well, excuse me, you're in check, so you would have to capture, uh, and then that gives black time to go ahead and capture. And if we look at the material, white goes down a piece here. So a good habit to get into, uh, if we go back to the game, is double check tactics and calculate, you know, especially if you're thinking about you know, starting a capture that's going to lead to a combination of different moves. Just double check everything uh, and, you know, try to calculate out what might happen and definitely look for checks, captures, and threats uh, before every move and that'll help prevent blunders. All right. Oh, and I saw another good habit to get into. Uh, when there's a series of exchanges and then there's that final capture it's a good habit to calculate uh, ahead one more move after the capture just to see you know, that your opponent doesn't have any surprises at the end of a combination that you didn't account for. All right, Alakine fortifies the center, creating this uh, pawn triangle that really covers this d5 square. And now we have the knight developing uh, before the bishop. And this is a good idea, a good habit here. Develop the knight and kind of hold off developing this bishop because if they capture, uh, well, then the bishop could recapture here. Uh, but if the bishop was moved early, say to here, and then the pawn captures, well, then you would just have to move your bishop twice. You know, you'd have to move again and recapture. All right, queen develops, pinning the knight to the king. So the game continues with uh, this knight retreating here, blocking the path of the queen towards the king, unpinning this knight, uh, because there is this threat, perhaps, of jumping here, uh, and that would have forked the knight and the bishop. And if that knight was still pinned, you know, this bishop could end up in trouble here. So, uh, oh, another good habit to get into is whenever a piece lines up on your king, even with other pieces in between like this, always be weary and double check uh, because you never know if the position opens up all of a sudden, uh, you might have a pinned piece or not be able to defend because this queen is lined up on your king. And that goes the same uh, with more valuable pieces lined up, uh, or excuse me, less valuable pieces lined up on more valuable ones. Uh, for example, if a rook is lined up on your queen, and if there's a lot of pieces in between them, uh, it could still be dangerous if those pieces start exchanging and moving out of the way. All right. Uh, we have a battery being created. So another good habit to get into. Look for batteries. Bishop, queen batteries. Rook and rook batteries. Rook and queen batteries. Uh, because you never know when two pieces or even three pieces working in tandem uh, can really pile up and add pressure to your opponent's position. All right, the queen, de uh, excuse me, develops off the back rank. Uh, and this is a good habit to get into. Uh, moving your queen to the second rank, maybe the third rank. Uh, you have to watch out. If you bring your queen out to the fourth rank or further, uh, make sure the queen is safe there because the queen's your most valuable piece other than the king. And if the queen is harassed, 
uh, an attack by less valuable pieces, it usually has to run. So the game continues with an exchange here. Uh, finally, this gambit is accepted, uh, but now we have capture, bishop exchanging off for a knight here. And after this position, we notice that Alakine has the bishop pair. And it's usually a good idea to keep your bishop pair, uh, especially if the position is more open. Now, if it's closed, the bishops aren't as powerful, uh, but even a closed position could open up and unleash the power of your bishop pair. Now, if you don't have the bishop pair, a good habit is to knock out your opponent's bishop pair uh, because now we notice that black has this extra dark squared bishop and that covers all these dark squares throughout the board that white cannot counter anymore after giving up their bishop. All right, here we go. Pawn is recaptured. Queen is under attack. The queen retreats, and now we have an attack on the bishop, forcing this bishop to make a decision on whether to retreat uh, or capture here. So the bishop retreats, keeping the bishop pair, and that's the best move. Uh, so now white develops his bishop off the back rank, preparing to castle, perhaps, and black castles, and white follows suit there. So... Another good habit to get into to improve your chess is uh, get in the habit of connecting your rooks, getting your pieces off the back rank quickly, getting your rooks connected where they protect each other, uh, and they have more room now to maneuver. And it's usually good uh, to put your rooks on open or half open files where the pawns have been traded off. Uh, or put your rooks behind pawns that are moving forward uh, or have moved forward or that you plan to exchange off, you know, opening up that file for the rooks. All right, bishop develops. Pawn pushes forward, gaining space on the queen side. Uh, usually a good habit to get into is to try and gain more space than your opponent. If you have more space like white does here, it's more uh, room for your pieces to maneuver. It gives them more mobility. Whereas black uh, with less space is a little bit cramped here. Now, if you have more space, you want to avoid trading too many pieces. Because if you have all your pawns pushed up the board uh, and all the pieces are traded off, it's a little bit harder to defend those pawns uh, you know, if they're spread out all up the board and there's a lot of open space there and not enough pieces to protect them. Uh, whereas if you're in a cramped position like black, they should aim to trade off more pieces. That way, the pieces that are left on the board will have more breathing room and more room to maneuver. So uh, here we have B6 being played. Uh, why is this played? Well, maybe with an idea of pushing the pawn here at some point, uh, or even pushing this pawn, trying to break things open and unleash the rook down the A file. So let's see what happens. Uh, Capablanca tries to improve the scope of his bishop. Now, when his bishop was back here on E2, uh, his knight was blocking it uh, on this diagonal. Um, he did have this diagonal, but the knight is kind of covering that here and here. So by jumping the bishop up here, you control squares in the center. You aim at this pawn, which is located on this half-open file. Uh, so that could become a target in the future. All right. The rook jumps over here to help back up this pawn along with the queen and bishop. And Capablanca places his rook in the center, a good habit uh, to centralize your rooks, uh, unless you keep them on the edge uh, where you have a file that is open or you plan to open a file there. All right. Uh, if 
your opponent has a rook on a file, a lot of times you want to place your rook on that file so you can fight for that file. Even if there's pieces in between, you never know when the file might open up uh, and there could be exchanges down that uh, open D file later. All right, the rook that was not doing anything moves towards the center. Another great habit to get into, especially if you're in a position in a game and you don't really know what move to make next, you're like, uh, well, I have no idea what to move here. A good habit to get into is ask yourself, well, what is my worst placed piece? So Capablanca here finds that this rook in the corner is his worst placed piece. Uh, the only thing it's doing here is guarding maybe this pawn and his other rook. So he brings it closer to the center uh, where it creates a battery with rook and queen lining up on that pawn along with the bishop. Uh, and then, you know, maybe a knight would jump here and pile up on the pawn. So let's see what happens. The bishop drops back. Uh, so maybe a waiting move. Uh, this also unleashes this rook uh, on the open file or half open file, I should say. And now we have g3 being played. Okay, uh, this move could allow the king to come forward or the bishop to drop back. Uh, maybe a plan of pushing this pawn in the future, gaining space on the king side. Uh, so let's see what happens now. The knight jumps forward uh, onto this outpost. Now, a good outpost would be one where uh, you don't have an enemy pawn that could chase you away, which is a possibility here. Uh, but here, you know, if there's a capture, the pawn could recapture. Let's see what Capablanca does. He drops back. Now, this is a good move because if this pawn, or excuse me, knight captures and the pawn captures towards the center, well then we would have problems here on this open file with the battery uh, maybe trying to capture the queen. Then if rook captured, the other rook would recapture here and go ahead and material. So the knight drops out of the line of fire, just dropping back. Uh, and now we have the queen retreating, allowing the rook to line up on the queen here. So remember, that's always dangerous when a less valuable piece lines up on a more valuable piece like the queen. Even with a knight and a pawn in between here, uh, you never know when the position is going to suddenly open up and then you have a rook bearing down on your more valuable queen. So, knight jumps forward and now we have a bishop repositioning here, uh, which does line up on the rook and there's a tactical threat of capture, pawn captures, bishop captures, forking, rook and king here. So the game continues with uh, that rook moving out of the line of a possible fork. Uh, so getting out of the path, once again, a less valuable piece lining up on a more valuable piece, even with a pawn in between. Capablanca is smart and anticipates uh, things in advance. So this is also known as uh, maybe a prophylactic move where you take steps ahead of time uh, to prevent problems before they even happen. So uh, the queen steps forward here, uh, which is interesting. He steps into the line of fire of this bishop. Uh, so let's see what happens next. Pawn pushes forward, chasing the knight. And now we have capture, capture, and the queen repositions, creating a battery uh, with the bishop. Uh, and you know, also maybe lining up this direction with an idea of pushing this pawn forward. So let's see what occurs next. 
Uh, we have a pawn push gaining space. Uh, always a good move uh, when you can make a move that does more than one thing. Well, I shouldn't say always a good move uh, because there's always exception, or there's usually many times there can be exceptions to the rules. So all these good habits that I'm mentioning, uh, you have to calculate on your own because, as I said, there can be exceptions. So here, this move does more than one thing. It gains space on the king side. It attacks the bishop, forcing the opponent to retreat, and that gives Capablanca time to continue with his operations. So what does he do? Uh, he launches his knight forward, but apparently this is an inaccuracy. And it would have been better to play e5, uh, kind of gaining more space. It does leave a backwards pawn on a half-open file, and that's usually uh, a bad habit that you want to avoid. So a good habit would be to avoid uh, having a backward pawn uh, on a half-open file uh, where pieces can start piling up on that. But in this position, the computer says it would be good. Uh, it kind of restricts the pawns here, uh, this e6 pawn, keeping things cramped, gains space for white to maneuver a little bit more. Uh, but in the game, we had knight to e5. So let's see what happens next. Well, uh, Capablanca responds with an inaccuracy, g6. It would have been better to play c5 and just go ahead and break things open here. Uh, unleash this rook uh, on the queen, perhaps. So let's see. g6 is played. And now we have the knight repositioning, attacking the bishop. So the bishop drops back. Now, what should Capablanca have done here? Apparently, knight to c4 would have been better, landing here. Um, you know, and then maybe push that pawn and jump the knight up to this outpost. You know, that would be a great spot for the knight up here. Uh, but they recommend knight to c4 uh, and then b5 immediately chasing the knight. And then what? Uh, knight down to e3 here. All right, anyway, in the game, we had an attack of the bishop. The bishop drops back, putting pressure on this pawn, pinning it to the queen, uh, and the rook is attacking it as well. So now this is a great move. So once again, gaining space, uh, blocking the scope of the bishop. So it does multiple things. It gains space, blocks the bishop. Uh, and let's see what happens next. So h5, equalizing the space on the king side, attacking the knight. Knight drops back. Uh, and now we have the best move, c5, breaking things open while this rook is lined up on the queen. So capturing towards the center, another good habit to get into. Generally, if you have a choice between capturing away from the center or towards the center, uh, it's usually good to capture towards the center. Now, not always, so you have to calculate, you know, Every decision, you have to at least look and not just blindly follow general chess principles. Uh, so that's a very good habit to get into is to do a little bit of double checking and calculation and do not just blindly follow uh, these general guidelines and general chess principles. So capture towards the center. Likewise, Alakine captures towards the center. And now, uh, instead of recapturing here, uh, so if we go back, if white would have captured here, the rook could capture, backed up by the queen, and chase 
Capablanca's queen and gain some initiative or momentum against Capablanca. So instead, he pushes his pawn here, which is best. Uh, and then we have pawn captures, the best move and a great move. Uh, and white still has a slight edge here, it looks like. Uh, let's see. Uh, after this move, yes, a slight edge. Um, so now queen to e6. The game is about even, though. And it continues with the pawn jumping into this outpost. Attacking the bishop, trying to knock out the bishop pair, perhaps. So the bishop captures here, giving up the bishop pair. Now, Bobby Fischer mentioned before that uh, he felt a good strategy was whenever somebody jumps a piece onto your side of the board, especially like this knight here, it's usually a good idea to knock that piece out, exchange it off or uh, attack it, send it retreating, get it out of your territory. And that's what Alakine does here. Capture and then pawn recaptures. And now Capablanca is left with doubled pawns here. Uh, and he also has given his opponent a passed pawn. Now it is isolated, but you know a passed pawn becomes more dangerous as it travels up the board towards promotion. So rook is exchanged, uh, and now we have the bishop lining up, attempting to exchange off even more material. So that is ignored for the moment, and an attack is placed on the queen. So a good chess habit to get into is when your opponent attacks you like this, he's attacking the bishop, a lot of beginners will just say, oh, I'm under attack, and they stop everything that they were thinking and doing, and they think, oh, I have to deal with this attack immediately. So I either have to capture uh, or make sure that I'm well protected, uh, and they always want to deal with this attack immediately. Well, sometimes you can ignore what your opponent is doing and launch a counterattack that's even more powerful. So now you are counterattacking the queen and forcing that more valuable queen to make a decision and you know get out of the line of fire. So here, uh, a good move or excellent move by the queen. The computer actually recommends, um, what, queen to d6 moving here, but this move piles up on the bishop. So what does Capablanca do? He just adds another defender, which is best, bringing this rook up. Uh, that also helps, you know, cover here, cover this pawn. Uh, and the passed pawn pushes forward here. Very interesting move. It looks like the queen can just go ahead and snatch this up. Um, let's see what happens. The pawn pushes forward. Tempting the bishop to capture. So, let's go back here. and We could take a look at what would happen if the queen were to capture. Well, this would be a blunder. Uh, because now, you have capture, queen captures with check, uh, but it's guarded, you know, by the queen here. So, you know, after queen captures, black would just be winning. So that is why um, you can't just snatch this pawn up. And another great habit to get into is avoid pawn hunting. You know, unless you know that it's uh, good to do so. You know, you have to double check if a pawn is what's called a poisoned pawn or not. So if you snatch up a pawn 
uh, you have to ask yourself, all right, if I capture, what's my opponent going to do? And then you probably would have noticed, oh, they can unleash a discovered attack on my queen here. So this move is played, uh, and it looks like uh, it would have been better to just go ahead and knock that bishop out. But now we have pawn pushing forward. So why did black not capture this? Let's take a look. So if you capture, uh, it looks like there's rook to e7. And what next? Dropping back to here and ignoring this pawn. Um, you wouldn't be able to protect the pawn because of the bishop covering this. You couldn't protect with the rook. Uh, and if the rook moves, this pawn would be unprotected. So what can you do here? Um... Well, maybe the queen could go here, try to protect, uh, but that would be a mistake uh, because then you have what? Um, it looks like bishop to c6 would have been the best move. Just dropping your bishop back, trying to get rid of this bishop uh, because now, let's see, computer recommends queen to c1 or d2. Hmm. All right, before I drag this out, we still have quite a few moves to go over, so let me speed this along. Uh, back to the game. A4 was played, and then A5. The bishop drops back. Uh, that is an inaccuracy. What would have been better to just go ahead and capture the bishop? But bishops are exchanged anyway, uh, and now we have queen centralizing with check. That's another good habit, is to... Uh, centralize your queen when you can, especially when you can centralize and deliver a check. Uh, because in the center, the queen covers a lot more ground. So the king has to move. And we noticed that the king did not go onto the back rank because of this nice centralized queen. Uh, there could have been a move like this, harassing the king. Uh, although... Uh, you know, after this block by the rook, but then the queen could move over here and grab this pawn and end up with two passed pawns. All right. Now we have queen uh, lining up on this pawn, threatening a capture with a check. So the rook attacks the queen, but this is an inaccuracy. It would have been better for the king to defend the pawn. So queen... Uh, staying in the center, helping protect this pawn, uh, and kind of eyeing this pawn, and maybe with an idea of going here, attacking the queen, trying to get rid of uh, the blockader of this passed pawn. And that's a good habit to get into, is when your opponent has a passed pawn, you want to try and blockade it. Knights are best to blockade pawns, uh, you know, a queen is your most powerful piece. You usually don't want to blockade a pawn with your queen, uh, but sometimes you have to. So the game continues with the rook adding pressure to this pawn. Uh, and now we have the king kind of getting off the back rank, moving up here, uh, kind of into a little safe zone. Uh, and now the rook centralizes, grabbing the open file. Uh, maybe with the idea of jumping up here and then attacking here with check. So the game continues with the queen dropping back a mistake by Alakine here. So queen capturing, uh, well, let's see, what would have been best? Computer recommends queen to b4. So it would have been better to go here, uh, trying to push the blockader away, uh, you know, or if queens were exchanged, that would be very dangerous because then there would be uh, two passed pawns here. 
So queen drops back, attacking the unprotected pawn. And now we have queen captures and the pawn pushes forward. So a dangerous passed pawn. Uh, if you can get a passed pawn moving, the further it goes up the board or down the board in this case, uh, the more dangerous it becomes. So queen jumps up here, the best move, threatening to capture with a check. The king guards the pawn. And now a great move by Capablanca. And at this point, the game is dead even. Although this passed pawn looks very dangerous here. Uh, so now, you know, the threat could be... Uh, well, you know, maybe bring this up with check, capture, queen captures. Uh, but then this passed pawn looks like it'll make it. Uh, so how does Capablanca handle this? Well, first Alakine attacks the rook. Uh, we have a doubling, a battery created here, but this is a mistake. Looks like rook to d7 would have been best. Uh, threatening to capture and, you know, go for a mate here. So, you know, in this position, uh, it's looking pretty crazy. You have this capture here. Something like that, king to h1, queen to f3. You can just start harassing the king, uh, queen to f2. You don't want to go here, though, uh, because that would be a mistake. You know, at that point, it looks like the queen can drop over here, protect, and this pawn is really looking dangerous. So, anyway, at this point, Alakine would be winning. So back to the game. Capablanca makes a mistake. The best move is played. Queen to c5. Uh, and now we have rook to e4, which is best. And capture attacking the king. So, king starts running. We have a check. The king is forced to move here. Um, you know, and that could be a draw right here. But, Alakine goes for more. Uh, he protects. He moves here and protects the uh, f7 pawn. Uh, pre preventing any counterattacks on his own king. So now, uh, we have queen getting behind... The passed pawn, another great habit to get into, is put rooks behind passed pawns. Uh, you know, here the queen goes behind past, behind the passed pawn. So the pawn uh, does not move forward. Apparently queen to f3 attacking the rook, kind of lining, pinning the rook to the queen. Uh, well, sort of, you know, is the best move. The rook could still move and protect the queen. Uh, so an inaccuracy here, but Alakine is still ahead at this point. We have a check, king moves, another check, uh, and king drops, you know, or moves up here. So we're getting close to a draw. Uh, and now, check. So the position is probably repeated three times already. Now the king moves. Uh, an inaccuracy. Once again, computer recommends queen to f3 protecting this pawn. So, a mistake here. Huh. All right. So we have a mistake. Why didn't they just capture here? That apparently would be a big mistake because of queen to f2, um, then what? King to h1 and rook to b8, threatening uh, to activate this rook. You know, there's already a mate threat on the back rank here. So, back to the game. 
Capablanca plays queen to c4, maybe trying to exchange off queens. So Alakine avoids that. King marches up. Now the queen corners his opponent's king. So Rook tries to drop over here, uh, helping defend the king, preventing this pawn from marching forward, and now an attack. Uh, so it looks like a fourth, but the queen is protecting the rook. This was a mistake. Queen to h1 apparently would have been better. So in the game, king moves. Queen grabs this pawn and defends the passed pawn. Capablanca starts marching his pawn up, but now this is a mistake, and it looks like it's pretty much a game-losing mistake. Um, rook to c2, blockading the passed pawn would have been better, uh, and the game would have been even after that. So, um, instead, we have rook centralizing... This is an inaccuracy. Queen to f1 would have been better. So moving here, you know, lining up on the queen, trapping the king. The pawn is marching. Uh, an inaccuracy. King to g2 would have been better. The queen drops down here to f1. And let's see what happens. Uh, we have a battery created and... Here, a pin to the king. So, capture, capture, and the pawns are moving. Two queens for black, two queens for white, but this is a mistake leading to a mate in three. Apparently, uh, the best move would be queen to g2, uh, but that would still lead to a mate in 13. So... In the game, we have two queens apiece, but Capablanca miscalculated here. Queen to g1, king is forced up, and check. So the game ends after queen to g2 blocking, and we have a mate. Because the pawn is cutting off this escape square. The queen cannot block because it's pinned by this queen. So a crazy ending there. Um, anyway, my final advice for uh, you know chess habits that you can help improve your chess with, uh, go over your own games. And I've mentioned this before. Maybe you've already heard it. Go over your own games uh, on your own without the help of a computer. And then after you try and figure out what you did wrong, uh, then you can use a computer to double check everything. And then you can also do that uh, with the games of the greatest players. You could go over their games, see what you thought was good and bad, and then check it with a computer. Uh, but just the habit of going over the best games uh, or most games by the greatest players like Capablanca and Alakine here, uh, you can always learn something from their games. So, you know, I highly recommend check out the games of the greatest players. Uh, another good habit to get into is find a chess hero, uh, a player whose style you like. Uh, maybe you want to copy their style and play similar to how they play. Uh, and then you can go over their games, maybe use some of their openings, some of their strategies. Uh, but anyway, let me wrap this up. Um, feel free to leave any comments. Like and subscribe to support the channel if you haven't already. Uh, and thank you for watching. Have a super chess day.